In this video, we're going over the concepts of alkanes and their nomenclature. Alkanes are hydrocarbons that contain only carbon-carbon single bonds and carbon-hydrogen single bonds. Their general formula is CnH2n plus 2. What this means is that if n equals a whole number, so for example, if n equals 1, this means that the chemical formula for this hydrocarbon is going to be C1H2 times 1 plus 2, which this gives rise to the alkane that has the chemical formula CH4. And as you can see in this table, which is a reference table from a different textbook, when you have one carbon atom, the chemical formula for that alkane is CH4. These alkane molecules are formed by a continuous chain of carbon atoms. In general, alkanes are known as saturated hydrocarbons because they contain the maximum number of hydrogen atoms that you can have for specifically a carbon atom. It is important that from this table, you memorize the number of carbon atoms, the prefix for a particular molecule, because this concept of number of carbons and prefix, we are going to utilize it not only for alkanes, but for the rest of the functional groups that we have in organic chemistry. So if you have an alkane that has only one carbon atom, the prefix is meth. And if it's an alkane, that's why the ending is in ane. So the simplest alkane, which is CH4, its name is methane. If you have two carbon atoms in your longest continuous chain of carbon, the prefix is F. And if we're talking about an alkane, this is ethane. And you can see that this is the structural formula for it. If you have three carbon atoms, the prefix is prop. The name of the alkane will be propane. This is the condensed structural formula. If your prefix is, if you have four carbon atoms in your alkane, the prefix is but, the name of the compound is butane, and this is the structural formula. From five through 10, all the prefixes are going to be Greek prefixes. As you can see, Pentane for five, hexane for six, heptane for seven, octane for eight, no name for nine, and decane for 10. You can see in the last column the different structures of those alkanes. Now, when it comes to the skeletal formula of these compounds, understand that we can start writing it from carbon. Um, from an alkane that has two carbons on. You cannot do the skeletal formula for methane. And when it comes to the skeletal formula of this, in the case of ethane, is just a line. For propane, this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. If it's butane, this is carbon one, two, three, four. For pentane, let me redraw that butane. One, two, three, four carbon atoms. For pentane, one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. For hexane, one, two, three, four, five, six. For heptane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to draw the last uh, three. Octane, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And lastly, I'm going to draw the skeletal uh, structural formula for decking down here. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Alkanes have different properties. Alkanes are going to be among the functional groups for organic chemistry, the ones that are nonpolar. And since they are nonpolar, they're insoluble in water. When it comes to density, they're actually less dense than water. And then they tend to be flammable in air. Alkanes are mostly found in crude oil. The image that you see on the right side of the slide, it actually represents an oil spill that happened in the ocean. Since alkanes that are found in this crude oil are going to be less than, that, than water, that's why we see that film on top of the water. Those orange spots are representing that oil that has alkanes in it. Moreover, because alkanes are nonpolar, they are not going to mix with water to make a solution. So that's why we see them separating. Now we are going to go over section 4.4, which is where we're going to learn how to draw and name alkanes. When it comes to alkanes, it is important to note that alkanes, as we recently saw, can be just a straight chain of carbon atoms. And if we observe the molecules that we have on the right side of the slide, we see the bowl and stick model for butane. And butane has the condensed structural formula of CH3, CH2, CH2, followed by CH3. The skeletal structure for butane is as follows. This is carbon one, up carbon two, down carbon three, up carbon four. Now, let's understand that when it comes to organic compounds, there are a number of organic compounds that have what are called substituents. So when we look at the molecule in the bottom of butane, this molecule shares with butane its chemical formula. Both molecules are C4HN, but we can see that the bottom molecule doesn't have the same attachment of atoms like butane. Here, if we look at the molecule overall, we're going to find a stretch of carbon, which is known as the parent chain, which I'm going to highlight in green. So these atoms that I highlighted in green are the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms that we have in the molecule. So with my highlighter tool, as you can see, those are represented here specifically in the condensed structural formula. Since that is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms, that is known as the parent chain. Any group of atoms that extends outside the parent chain, it is known as a substituent. So we can see that in this molecule, we have one substituent, that carbon with three hydrogens. So what is the name of that substituent? As you can see in this table, which is 11.5, utilized from a different reference book, we can see that that substituent has a name and it's called a methyl group. Overall, the way that these substituents or branches are actually named is by the number of carbons that they have. So since this has only one carbon, that's why it has the meth prefix in it. 
the YL in methyl represents that this is a branch. So if you have a substituent that is two carbons in length, CH3, CH2, that is known as an ethyl group. Understand that specifically, when it comes to this, this bond that I'm actually writing in red, that is what is attached to the parent chain. So these substituent through that bond, they're going to be attached to the parent chain. Let's continue with the substituent names. If my substituent is a CH3, CH2, CH2, and then this is attached to the parent chain, that is known as a propyl group. If instead of doing it through a corner carbon, a three carbon chain is attached to the parent chain via the middle carbon, that is known as an isopropyl group. Lastly, as you can see, halogen atoms can also be substituents. So if we have a fluorine as a substituent, that is called a fluoro group. If we have a chlorine as a substituent, that is known as a chloro group. If we have a bromine as a substituent, that is called a bromo group. And lastly, if we have an iodine as a substituent, that is called a iodo group. Now we're going to proceed to learn the rules for how to name alkanes given a structure. We are first going to learn the rules of how to name alkanes when you have one substituent. Every time we have an alkane with one substituent, we have to find what is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms in our structure. Next, we are going to be numbering the carbon atoms starting from the end that is nearest to a substituent. Next, we are going to give the location and the name of the substituent as a prefix to the main chain. The main chain is in other words, that parent chain, meaning the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms present in your structure. And when we give the location for the carbon atom that is holding the branch, we are going to separate it from the other words through a hyphen. So let's do the two examples that we have right here on the slides. Let's first, look at the following structure for this condensed structural formula. If I explore in this molecule, I can actually observe that my parent chain consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons in length. The reason why I went from right to left is because that end is closest to the substituent. So when I'm naming this molecule, I can observe that my parent chain is going to have the name of oct for the uh, eight carbons Ane, because I have an alkane, and then as a prefix of that, I'm going to name the branch that I have. The branch or substituent is this area that I am putting with dotted lines. That is specifically called an ethyl group. And the position of that ethyl group within my octane is at position three. So the name of this molecule is 3-ethyl-octane. Let's look at the next example. In the next example, I have a skeletal 
formula. Here, I can also select my parent chain. I have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Remember that in a skeletal formula, the first end starts with a carbon. Each vertex has a carbon atom and the end also has a carbon atom. So when I number this parent chain, this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. So when I name my parent chain, this is going to be hexane, because I have an alkene, and the parent chain has six carbon atoms. Then specifically, I have a substituent, which I'm here circling with dotted lines. That substituent is a chloro group. And within that hexane, it is specifically at position two. In the following slide, we have examples of alkanes with one substituent. We can observe that this is the molecule that we had below butane. Let's take a moment and let's name it. The name of this molecule This is my parent chain. This is how I number it. This is two methyl propane. Take a moment and name the molecule next to two methyl propane. Let's first find the longest carbon chain in our molecule. For this molecule, it is four. One, two, three, four. Since there's four carbons in the parent chain, then that parent chain name is butane. If we number the carbon atoms, we're going to go one, two, three, four. My substituent name, because this is the branch, that is extending outside of the parent, that is called a methyl group. And then at position two, we have that methyl group. So the correct name for this molecule is 2-methylbutane. Make sure that you practice with the rest of the molecules that we have in this slide. Now that we know how to go from structure to name, we can also do name to structure. And for this, I'm going to do the first example, one chloropropane. When it comes to going from name to drawing the structure, I always start at the parent chain. And the parent chain is the last word. As you can see, this molecule says propane. So from my prefixes, I know that that parent chain is going to have one, two, three carbons in length. In a condensed structure, I'm going to illustrate the carbons and the hydrogens attached to the carbons. 
here I see that it says one chloro. So if I number my carbons one, two, three, that means that on carbon number one, I'm going to put a chlorine group. In a condensed structure, I need to fill in the hydrogens for each atom. How I know how many hydrogens I'm going to add is by going from the point of view that each carbon atom needs an octet. That means that overall it needs eight electrons. In other words, in general, it needs four bonds. So we can see that carbon number one already has this bond and this bond. So technically we need to put two more bonds to fill its octet. And since this is a hydrocarbon, that means that here we're going to put two hydrogens. On carbon number two, we can observe that it's already having one, two bonds. That means that it needs two more positions with hydrogen in order to complete its octet. So carbon number two also needs two hydrogens. Carbon number three has only one bond. In order to complete its octet, we need to put three things around it, which means hydrogen, because we're talking about hydrocarbons. So that's why carbon number three is going to be CH3. If I'm trying to draw the skeletal structure of one chloropropane, the minute that my utensil touches my paper, that's carbon one, and I go up, that's carbon two, down, that's carbon three. And then out of carbon one, I'm going to connect my chlorine. In skeletal structure, we do not illustrate the carbon atoms or the hydrogens that are connected to carbon. Make sure that you practice with the other examples that we have here for condensed and skeletal structure.